My name is Paul and I'm a chocoholic. It's one hour since I've had my last chocolate. My interest in chocolate was no more than, than the average child's interest uh, and the average adult's until I got to my late 19, uh, 1970s when I was in my late 20s. As I'm a teetotaler, uh, and I don't drink tea or coffee. Chocolate has become my great interest. And that was furthered by having these discussions with the owners of Belle Fleur. And I then tra travelled around to different chocolate shops, trying their products as well. But I've always come back to Belle Fleur. This is not a criticism of other chocolate uh, companies. It's just that Belle Fleur makes the chocolates that suit my particular taste. There are many other good chocolate shops in Australia and the world. And I rate chocolate shops, the finished chocolate product, uh, as three categories. The best, the middle level, which are quite acceptable, and the confectionery lines. The main difference um, between these three levels goes all the way back to the trees themselves that grow the cacao pots. There are three different types. The names uh, escape me, but one, uh, I think Criollo is considered to be the best uh, for producing high quality chocolate. The pods are cut off the, uh, the tree very carefully so as not to prevent future growth from that uh, limb. And they are then cut open and the pith uh, and the pods uh, are taken, the uh, insides of the pods are taken out, spread on banana leaves and more banana leaves on, on top. And they're left out in the sun for about three days to ferment. When the farmer decides that the sufficient time has taken place. The pod, the uh, beans are then taken away, processed a little bit further, and then shipped in bulk form, dry bulk form, over to America and Europe to the major chocolate processors. Now, these are not the companies who make the finished product, but these are large-scale processors of the raw chocolate into bulk chocolate. This is where the first major step is taken in relation to providing a particular level of chocolate quality. The cocoa pods are from processed and produced, are broken down into a powder, which is cocoa powder, otherwise known as cocoa mass, and cocoa butter which is a, a fat. The cocoa mass is, is a carbohydrate. Now, the, quite often, a large proportion of the cocoa butter is sold off to the cosmetics industry because it's a very good foundation for various cosmetic creams. Uh, and it, it's highly valued. In fact, the big uh, chocolate companies can get a much higher price from the cosmetic companies than they can selling it as chocolate. So this is where the first step comes in. When the two components, the carbohydrate and the fat, are recombined, then that makes the highest quality chocolate and also can be used for mid-level chocolates. But where the cocoa butter is completely removed and replaced by another vegetable fat, this is called compound chocolate when it's combined with the cocoa powder. Uh, and this produces a lower quality chocolate still can be called chocolate, but it's really for confectionery lines only. A lot of people will have the view that from these large uh, chocolate companies, chocolate processing companies, 
it's really just the the one product that comes out but it's not there are very there's a very wide range of grades of bulk chocolate that's produced according to the, the taste that's required by the uh, chocolate um, the chocolatiers themselves the people who make the finished product and so there, there are, can be quite a lot of different grades of chocolate and they will range all the way from very dark chocolate, a very high percentage of cocoa powder, uh, to a very low percentage of uh, cocoa powder. Now, white chocolate is very popular. In fact, it's the most popular chocolate in Australia. But really, white chocolate is not chocolate because what gives chocolate its essence is the cocoa mass. The cocoa butter gives it its smoothness um, and aids its taste, but the actual essence of chocolate comes from cocoa powder. Once you remove that, then it's no longer chocolate. And if you have any cocoa powder at all in, in the mix, it's going to be some level of brown. Where it's pure white, you're just eating fat with some sugar in it. How various companies who sell white chocolate can call it chocolate, I'm not sure. I'm sure the trade practices people would have something to say about it if they really cared. But then, as long as we all know what white chocolate is and isn't, then I don't suppose it really matters. But there is talk about chocolate being very healthy for you, very good for you. And that's true to a certain degree, and I'd like to say, being a chocoholic, that of course it, it um, provides tremendous health benefits to you. It does provide health benefits, but only in minute amounts, very trace. So the darker the chocolate, the higher the cocoa mass content, the more good ingredients there are in it. The lighter the chocolate colour, the less cocoa mass, the more milk that's in there, the more sugar, uh, and therefore there are. it's not quite as high a quality. But we're really talking about tiny differences. So my rule of thumb is eat what you like. Um, and that, that goes, even if you like white chocolate, by all means, eat it. Just don't call it chocolate. Um, the, as it's Easter time at, uh, now, the question has come up about the quality of the different types of products of chocolate over, available over Easter. What you've got to remember is that most of the very popular mass market chocolates were probably made six or nine months ago and are being kept in cool storage all that time. That's not to say they're bad when they come out, otherwise they wouldn't sell. But it's people who don't have a great interest in chocolate itself, apart from the sweetness of it and that it's chocolate um, that they like eating. If you're interested in good quality chocolate, then you're going to go and buy your chocolate from a atelier chocolate shop. That is, small chocolatiers that you know make the chocolate on the premises and they make it very close to Easter, Christmas, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, whenever. Uh, because they're also very concerned about not just the taste of the, the, the chocolate, the freshness of the chocolate as well. And for most people, a confectionery style chocolate is fine. Again, have, eat what you like. It, it doesn't matter if you like confectionery lines, eat it. But if you like good quality chocolate, then you need to go to the high-end chocolate shops. I like to buy chocolate for family, friends, and to, you know, hope that they will share my enthusiasm for chocolate and for good quality chocolate. But, again, it comes back to whatever uh, you like, whatever you want to, whatever you like eating, by all means eat that. But some people say, why are you buying good quality chocolate for kids? They're not going to appreciate the difference. And I think that's right. I once did a taste test for my uh, great nieces who were at that time about 10 years old and 8 years old. And I bought a block of dark milk and white chocolate 
and we sat down after dinner one night and I gave them a sample of each and said now these are the various uh, sensations you should expect when you have this and you taste the, the bitterness, you taste the sweetness, um, you taste the, the high fat content and they all seriously they nodded at me and yes yes and afterwards they went off to bed and their mother turned to me and said they didn't uh, notice any of that they just agreed because they wanted to to uh, to be nice to you they just enjoyed eating chocolate and she was right of course so it really is something that will come up in later years but that hasn't stopped me from buying good quality chocolate for my uh, friends and relatives and their kids because I figured get them on it early and get them on the good stuff early so that they can really appreciate it. My name is Paul, I'm a chocoholic and it's now been an hour and 15 since I've had my last chocolate.